Hi everyone, my name is April and welcome. In this video, I'm going to share with you a project that I created in Power Apps with the new Mixed Reality features. Just last year, the Power Apps team announced three new Mixed Reality features available for you to use in your Power Apps apps. So the first one is going to be the ability to view a model in 3D. So within the app that you create, you can turn and move and view the different model from various angles. The second feature is going to be the ability to view an object in mixed reality. So what that means is that you can take that 3D model and actually view it in your space at scale. And so essentially it's going to be augmented reality. And then the third feature is measure in mixed reality. What you can do with that feature is actually measure a space using a like a digital ruler, if you will, and then you are able to access those actual measurements. So in this video, what I am sharing with you is a sample or a prototype, if you will, of an interior decorating app. The scenario is that a client will be able to look through a catalog of products and they can filter based on category. The client can then select an object. They can then view the model in 3D, have more information about the model as well. And then after that, they can look at the model in mixed reality in their space at scale. So that way they can get an idea of how that object looks in their room. The one bonus feature that I added to that sample is the ability to then take that photo and share with the interior decorator by uploading to OneDrive. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. So here is Power Apps, and here is an example of the app that's going to be created. I'm going to head into the play mode so that way we can test it out. Within this app, there's a drop down at the top. You can select one of the categories, let's say kitchen, for example. And then within here, it'll filter to all the products that have the category of kitchen. Next, you can select one of the objects. So I'm going to select coffee grinder there. It's going to load a 3D content, and once that's been loaded, you can move the object around. If we were on a phone, for example, we'd be able to move it right within the app. There's another feature to view in mixed reality. Selecting that particular icon will enable us to view the object in our space, and that's going to be viewed at scale. Now, once you've viewed the object in mixed reality, you also have the option to take a photo in there. So you'll take the photo, and then selecting the right arrow, the photo will display on this screen. Right now, there's nothing there since no photo has been taken. And then just below, there's a button for uploading it to OneDrive. So that's what we're going to be creating. Right now in my Explorer, I am in OneDrive and in OneDrive, I've created a Power Apps folder. The reason that this is being saved to OneDrive is that later, once we head over into Power Apps, we're going to do a data connection with OneDrive. Now within this folder, I have two subfolders and then I also have an Excel spreadsheet. The first subfolder, which is named 3D underscore models, is going to be a 3D model of each particular object that's going to be used in the project. So for example, if I were to select coffee grinder, in a 3D viewer that pops up, this is what that model is going to look like. In the other subfolder, I have model photos. And within here, these are going to be the PNG images for the models that are going to be in that models folder. So these are going to be important because in the app that we're creating, I'm also going to display an image of what the actual object is. And the final thing is going to be the Excel spreadsheet itself. So let's go ahead and open that up. So here's the Excel spreadsheet that is created that has all of the information for the models. There are some required columns and I'll call them out. And then there's some that I've added just to get us a certain UI that I would like for this app. In column A, there's the name of the model. This name should reflect the exact way you want the model to be named in the app because that's where it's going to pull from. Column B, there's going to be 3D model and then brackets, it's going to say image. This particular column is what's going to be used to reference the models that are within that folder that has all the different 3D models. 
Since we're using relative links here, that's why you'll want to ensure that the subfolder that contains the model is in the same folder as the Excel spreadsheet. In column C, there's going to be the price of each item. This is all completely made up numbers. It's just for the sake of example. Column D, there's going to be the description. I happen to have used lorem ipsum, which is going to be dummy text that you can add as well. In column E, I have the categories that are going to be used for the app. So the app will have the functionality to filter products by category. And then finally, in column F, I have the relative links to all the different PNG images for the corresponding model. So again, you will want to ensure that you have the images folder as a subfolder of the overarching folder for the project. And that's what's going to allow you to use relative links. Now, the next step is to create all the cells as a table. This is going to be important because in Power Apps, you will need to select which table from the spreadsheet should be used for the data. To do so, you're going to highlight all of the cells that should be a table. And then from there, you're going to select Format as Table, and you can select any of the themes, it doesn't matter. Once you've done that, you'll come to Table Design. In the top left corner, there is a section that says Table Name. That's where you'll want to provide a name for the table. If you do not, then by default, I believe it calls it table one. So give it a name so that way it's more recognizable when you head over into Power Apps. So from here, make sure that the file is saved in OneDrive because that's how we're going to access it once we head over into Power Apps. And speaking of Power Apps, let's head over there now. So starting here within Power Apps, I am going to create a new app and I'm going to do a Canvas app. This will open up the screen and from here, I am going to do a blank app. We're going to do a phone layout, but you're welcome to do tablet instead. Once that's been loaded, I am going to skip the option to build anything with a template or to let it ask me what to add to here. I'm gonna do everything from scratch. So starting out, the first thing that we'll do is create the first page or the first screen. So right now I'm in screen one. To organize things a bit more, I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call this one gallery. That's what's going to have all the different models in a gallery format. So now that that's there, the next thing I'm going to do is connect my data. Selecting the icon for data, you are going to then select add data and then connectors. And I mentioned earlier, we're going to connect to OneDrive. So for me, that's going to be OneDrive for business. And then I'll select the appropriate login. From there, I am going to navigate to where I have my information, which happens to be the folder that I just selected. And then I'm going to select that Excel that I showed you all earlier. But then here, this is where I'll see all my tables. So this is where that naming of the table is very essential. I'm going to select models and click connect. Once that connection has been made, it displays to here in my data panel. I'm going to now head back to that screen where the gallery is. And the first thing that we'll do is create the actual gallery. So going to insert, I'm going to create this as a vertical gallery. That then adds a gallery here to my screen. I want it to extend the entire length of the screen. So I'm going to move it down there and then drop it down a little bit. So now that the gallery's in, I want to select the data source, which is going to be models. And so these are going to be the objects that I have here. The first thing I want to do in here is change the layout. So I at most want the photo to display the name of the product and then the price. So to do that, I can do that with just the image title and subtitle. So there we are. And then I'm going to get rid of the arrows to select to go to the next screen. So you can select one of them and select delete and then it'll get rid of all of them. Now I need to modify what each element should pull from in that data. So starting off with the image, right now it is pulling this dot item and then the actual 3D model. This isn't what we want. So 
Going back to this dot item, I'm going to select the period and then it's going to pull in the different categories that I have. Here's my picture one. So selecting that, now I have all of my pictures. Next, for the title, if you will, right now it's pulling in for text to category, which is not what we want. Instead, we're going to use name. Now that that's correct, I have the proper names. And then the next thing that I want to do is change this one last area, which is going to be currently the description, but instead we're going to make that to be the price. Did I call it price? Yes, I did. So now we have the actual cost of everything. You'll notice that I am missing the actual currency, if you will. So let's make this to be a little bit smaller. I'm going to drag that to the right a bit. And then I'm going to add a new text label. This one's just going to be a dollar sign. And let's make it a little smaller because we don't need that to be too large. I'm going to pull that to be just below the name. And we can adjust as needed. Bring the price a little closer to it. This part's always tricky for me. But for the sake of example, that's how we're going to do that there. All right. The next thing that we're going to add now is going to be the drop down. So you can go to insert, which is where we are already, and you can search drop down. Selecting drop down, it adds it in here in the screen. The next thing I need to do is add in my options. So within items, I'm going to remove the drop down sample. I'm going to create a pair of brackets. And within that brackets, we're going to follow the syntax for adding in the options. So using double quotes, the first one I'm going to have is all products. This will display all of the products that are available. Using a comma, the next one I'm going to do is add a category for living room. And then following living room, I am going to add one for office. Following office, I'm going to add one for kitchen. And then the final one is going to be bedroom. So now that that's in, if I head into the review mode, I should be able to select that drop down, and then I have all of my options. However, right now we don't have the logic to do the filtering. So let's go and add that now. I'm also going to move down this just a bit. And let's give this a bit more real estate. Mm, don't like that so much. Let's put it back. Okay, the next thing that needs to be done is to add in the logic for the gallery. So that way, based on what's selected for the drop down, the gallery will filter accordingly. So back in the tree view, I'm going to select the gallery. And then for items, I'm going to add in a conditional formula that's already been created. What's going to happen with this formula is if a category is selected, then the gallery will filter accordingly. So I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to make this a little bigger so we can see. I'm going to remove the formatting and then I'm going to add it back to make it look more how it should look. So what's happening in here is if the drop down one selected value is all products, then we're going to sort by the model's name. So it'll be in alphabetical order if all products are selected and it will, will display all of the products. However, if for models, the category is whatever the drop down one selected value is, then instead we're going to filter based on that. So that's what this is going to be. So let's close that up. Let's head into review. And then to demonstrate that I'm going to select kitchen and now I have all the items with the category of kitchen. So now that that screen is essentially done, we can head into creating the actual product page. All right, so back here in the editor, we're now going to add a new screen for the product page. What's going to happen is that once we select one of the products, we're going to navigate to that screen and we're going to have more information about the product. So going to new screen, we're going to create a blank one and let's rename that to be product page just to keep things organized. And now that we have that screen, we're going to head back to the gallery and we're going to create that navigation. So that way, when we select one of the items, we'll head to the next screen. I am going to select the entire block. So that way, no matter where you press within that particular area of the gallery, you'll navigate. So Selecting that, and then we're going to head to on select. We're going to do navigate, and then we're going to select the page, which in this case is going to be the product page. And then I like adding some animation. Let's see if it'll give me, yep, transition. We want this transition to be 
the fade. I like the way that looks. So let's close that up and then give you an idea of what that's gonna look like. We'll have to test it in a minute once we set up some stuff on the product page. So heading into the product page, the first thing I'm gonna do is add in the information for the product. So that's going to be the name, the price, and the description. So selecting insert, we're gonna add a text label. And for that label, we're going to set the text for that one to be gallery one. And it's going to be the selected particular item. And then we're going to pull in the, let's make this one the title or the name, if you will. So that's what's going to be pulled in there. So the first one we have is going to be chair, for example. The next thing that we'll do is add in another text label. This one's going to be for the description. So similar to what we just did, we're going to do gallery one and then whatever is selected from gallery one. And then after that, we are going to do description. And then now I have that Lorem Ipsum description. I'm gonna drag that down, drag the, uh, the name down, if you will. And then I'm gonna add two more labels. One's going to be that dollar sign for the price, so we know the currency. And it didn't like that, so I'll figure that out in a second. But let's go ahead and add in the actual price. So similar to what we've just done, we're going to put in gallery one and then select it, follow by, I think it's going to be price, correct? And now we have the price. Let's make that a little smaller. It doesn't need to be too big. I'm going to drop that here next to the actual name and then creating a new label for the currency. I need to put that in quotes, which is why it didn't work before. So let's do the dollar symbol and then let's make that smaller like we did for price because it doesn't need to be long. And then we're gonna drop that here next to it. So let's slide that over just a smidge. And there we have us our basic information about the product. I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna move it down using my arrows on my keyboard. So there we are. So the next thing that we're going to do is add in the ability to view this model in 3D. So by adding in that feature, the user will be able to view the model in their phone in the 3D version of it. So within media, I am going to come to view in 3D and then I'm going to make this a little bigger so that way the user has a bit more space to actually view the model. And I think that size is going to be good. So now that that's been done, what I need to do for items is make this be models. And then from there, we need to go to the actual source. So for the source, that is going to end up being, we're gonna take out what's there for the sample and then we're going to add in for model gallery. Maybe I don't have it called that in this one. We're going to call that gallery one, excuse me for that and then it's going to be selected followed by 3D model because now this is going to be the actual 3D model itself. So now that that's there, it's just gonna load it and it should pull in the chair as it's done. I'm gonna head into review so you can check out what's happening here. As you see on the screen, as I select the object, I can move it in 3D and turn it all around. So that works perfectly. I'm gonna close that out so the last thing I need to do on here is add in a button to view this object in mixed reality. So when you view this in mixed reality, that'll give you the chance to view the object in your actual space. And you can also take a picture once you are viewing in mixed reality. Going to insert, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom. Let's close up media so we can have a bit more space. We're gonna open up mixed reality and then we're going to view in MR. It's going to create this button, if you will, and for that particular button, let's just do the icon. We don't need the text. You can make that smaller, and you can actually align that on top of the view in 3D area. Now, within this particular one, what we need to do is modify the source. Right now, it's the sample. So this is going to be gallery one, and then this is going to be similar like we've done before. It's going to be the selected object, and then we're going to make whatever selected in the 3D model, and it's going to display that model in our real world. Now, I can't necessarily test this on the computer, but what I can do instead is test this on the phone. So let's go try it out there.
Okay, we have just one more screen to create and that's going to be the screen where we can view the photo and then upload that to OneDrive. Now, before I do that, I actually need a bit more space on my screen because I need to add some forward and backwards buttons. So I'm going to make this view in 3D section a little smaller. I'm going to come to insert and then icons and there's going to be a forward and back button. They look like arrows. Let's find that. I think I might have gone too far down. Let me scroll back up there. And there we are, there's going to be a next. So let's add that here. And then we're going to need a back one, which is going to be back. So there we are. All right, so before we add the logic to that, let's go and create that screen. So here in new screen, we want to make a blank one. Let's call this one view photo or yeah, let's make a view photo. Okay, I'm going to close up that product page so we can see a little better as well as gallery. Okay, so we have that screen heading back to the product page. Let's put some logic in for these buttons. So for the on select for the back one, we want to navigate and we want this to go back to the gallery screen. And then from there, we want the screen transition. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. The screen transition to be fade. Okay. And then the one that's going forward for the on select, that's going to be navigate, followed by the view photo screen. And then let's give it that transition. We're gonna make that one fade as well. So there we are. Let me put the parentheses back. There we go. All right, so the first thing we need to do is add a way to actually view that photo that's taken when we're viewing the model in mixed reality. We're going to do that with a horizontal gallery. So going to gallery horizontal and there is the gallery. Now we don't necessarily need the title and the subtitle that's in here. So we're going to get rid of those. But before I do that, let's create this gallery or let's expand this gallery to be the full length of the view and then select the subtitle and the title, get rid of that. And then for the image itself, we're going to expand that over and then let's make the image also extend the full length and width of the screen. So that should be right there in the middle. Okay, so now that we have that set up, let's go in and let's work on all the different formulas. So starting with the gallery itself, for the items, this is going to be the view in MR dot photos so it's going to be any photo that's taken when we view an mr then for the image itself the image is going to be as it says here but it's going to be dis.image.uri okay so that's been set properly and now before we test that out in power apps on my phone we are going to add in a button to navigate backwards so selecting icon we're going to select the back arrow and then for on select that's going to be navigate and then we're going to go back to the product page and then for the screen transition we're going to do fade okay so let's go test that out on my phone Okay, so now we need a button to actually upload that photo to OneDrive. So to start off, we're gonna to go to insert and let's select button, drag that down to the bottom and let's change the text for that. This will now say instead upload to OneDrive. So upload to OneDrive, oh, that's too long. Let's just say upload photo, there we go. Okay, so my button has been created and now what I need to do is add a way 
for the button press to upload the photo to OneDrive. And we can do that with a flow using Power Automate. So make sure that you select the button, go to Action, and then Power Automate. I happen to already have a flow created, but I'm going to create a new one so that way you understand what that process is. So select Create a New Flow, and then once you've created the new flow or select that button, you're going to go to Create, and then you're going to do a automated cloud flow. So once you've selected that, I'm going to skip this first screen up here to the top left. Very crucial. Make sure you name that. I am going to name mine. Let me select it. Can't select it for whatever reason. And this one's going to be called upload. And then now that I've done that for the trigger, the first one's going to be power apps. And then there's no additional steps for that one. So then we can add the second step, which is going to be that upload to OneDrive. So select next step. And then you can search for this one. I'm gonna search for one that says OneDrive and it's going to be to create a new file. So it's create file. It's gonna save a file to a folder. Now you might be wondering well, what folder am I referring to? So you need to have a folder created in OneDrive where the images can be stored. Mine happens to be called the mr-demo-uploaded and that's where any photo that's going to be uploaded via Power Apps is going to be placed there. So here in Create, what I need to do is add that photo path. So let me double check that I have the right one. Okay, so here in Folder Path, it's going to be mr-demo-uploaded. So that's my path. And then for the file name, what we're going to first do is select Ask in Power Apps. Therefore, whatever we name it in Power Apps is going to be what it's uploaded as. Now that we have the file name, we want to go to File Content, select Expression, and then within the documentation, there's going to be a formula that you need to copy and then paste here into the formula bar. I'll link it below, but for now, that's where you're going to find it, and then you're going to select OK. Back on Dynamic Content, you're going to go to See More, and then from there, select Ask in Power Apps. It's going to add an additional Create File and then File Content. You can get rid of that one. And then once you've done that, you can select Save. Once the flow has been created, Power Automate is going to provide a notification to inform you that the flow is ready to go. So from here, let's head back over into Power Apps. Now that the flow has been added, the final thing we need to do is modify this on select formula. So our documentation provides you with what actually needs to go here. I modified it a bit and I'll explain what's different, but for now I'm going to paste what I have in here for when I originally created this. And then I'm going to remove the formatting. I'm going to format it so that way it's in a better view. Now, the first thing that I've done is add in the naming convention that I would like for my images. So now whenever they are uploaded to that folder, it's going to start with, in this case, let's say my last name, which is Spate, and then it's going to add a timestamp based on when it's been uploaded. The next thing that I've also added is a notify prompt to inform me that the photo has been uploaded successfully. So for that one, I added in a prompt that says photo uploaded and then the notification type is going to be success. Now that this app is complete, let's save and then I'm going to head back over to my phone to view the entire thing in Power Apps.
Okay, that's it for this video. If you haven't given Power Apps a try, I would highly suggest you go check it out. There are some resources below, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or come find me on Twitter at Vogue and Code. And until next time, take care.